Hey, so everybody, this is my uh, 1963 Falcon, obviously convertible. What I'm going to be doing here is repairing uh, a seal in the uh, hydraulic pump. So what we've done so far is I've already disconnected this uh, um, electrical connector here, um, and uh, I've already taken off uh, the connecting bolt here as well as one on this side as well too. Uh, the problem with this is that um, the seal here on this side I believe is leaking and when I first got the car um, the actual underneath the seat here uh, was filled with fluid and it was all leaked down. It's pretty much cleaned up now but when I got the car it was uh, uh, it was a disaster actually. Um, so like I said I've been trying to I've been planning on doing this for some time now. You can see here the the fluid lines. I already have this one loosened up here um, and I'm gonna pull it off. I'm not quite sure if it's gonna leak out or not. Um, <clears throat> I have the top down right now because I was afraid if I had the top uh, I had the top up right now. I was, I was afraid if I had a top down um, that uh, the pressure would build up in these lines and it would sh shoot out and everything. So I have the one here in the back to do. I'm going to do that in just a second. I'm going to pull the um, pump out and see if I can replace this uh, seal. There's an O-ring here and there's an O-ring on this side as well too. Um, from what I can understand, I've read some things online that it is... Um, possibly repairable. A new one costs over $200 and it's the last thing I want to do. It actually works well. It's just that the fluid here, what I've actually had to do is I've kept this, um, uh, it's at a minimum, but I've kept this paper towel in here right now. And as you can see, the paper towel right there is stained. Now it's just uh, from a day or so uh, of oil dripping out of it. So um, it's something that needs to, it needs to be repaired, definitely. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this out. I'm gonna take off the one in the back uh, and then I'll be back in just a moment. I may have it on the workbench and uh, disassemble it and see how it goes and everything. So hang on, everyone. So what I've had to do is I've had to actually pull the, the pump off its mounting bracket to get to the back uh, fitting. I wasn't able to do that with the uh, pump in place. So that's where I'm at right now, I'm pulling this out. So watch me do it here and pull this out. Pump's gonna probably fall here as soon as I disconnect this fitting. Um, and the it uses type A transmission fluid uh, as the hydraulic uh, fluid in it, um, and that's where we're at for right now. Okay, folks. So here's the um, hydraulic pump out of my '63 Falcon convertible. I'm pretty sure this is original equipment just by looking at the type of connectors that are on here and this wire. Um, it's a little heavier gauge, uh, but it is definitely stiff as the uh, you would think that insulation this old. No cracks in it, in it or anything like that, but it's definitely um, been there a while. Um, you can tell it's it's pretty uh, quite covered in oil and it's been cleaned up since when I've done this. Um, so this is the front here. Um, you can tell you have uh, grommets here. These uh, sit on the back uh, and these are the front here. Looks like we have one one blown out here on this side over here. Um, uh, looks like we have some fluid leaking here. I'm going dis to disassemble this and see where it uh, where it gets me. Um, I'll try and keep the camera on as long as possible so you folks can see um, see what I'm doing. And uh, I haven't done this before, um, but I, I've looked at, watched a couple, uh, well not read a couple things online, saw some exploded diagrams online. I have uh, the original service manual for the car uh, from 63 uh, and uh, it shows um, uh, parts explosion, uh, parts exploded diagram. Maybe I'll pull it out in just a second, but I'll, we're going on here. So this here is the addendum to the 60 to 61 um, shop manual. It covers this specifically the 63 Falcon and in this part here, this uh, several pages on convertible top here as you can see the reservoir assembly over here you can actually see what um, the exploded diagram looks like and I know it's a little hard but just so you can all see um, there is a seal right there here's the end cap there's a seal right there as well too this is the one here that seems to be leaking now I don't know if these are available I'm gonna pull it apart 
and I'm going to see whether or not I can find one of these or something that's similar to this. So um, this is what we got right now, um, and uh, we'll, we will see just where it gets us. So hang, hang loose, folks. So according to the parts diagram, this right here is the filler plug, and this bolt right here, it goes through to the motor itself here, and this uh, holds on. Uh, this uh, reservoir here. This is the reservoir inside here. So I'm going to disassemble it now. All right, so I'm going to scribe this just like it says in the owner's in the service manual. The mark right here. And mark right here. All right, so here's the filler plug. I'm going to take this out. Okay. Um, all right. Doesn't seem to be actually. It doesn't seem to be full at all in there. So I could have lost a lot of fluid. Here's a 17 millimeter wrench. There we go. Broke fluid free. Be no ring inside there because that, uh, yep, there's a, a seal according to this. There's a seal in here. Um, uh, more than I thought was in there. All right, so I disassembled it, had a little bit of a mess there. Nothing that couldn't be easily cleaned. Um, I, honestly, I, I don't think there was much pump fluid in here fluid in here, because uh, what you saw come out on the video was just about all that was in there. So here's what I have everyone. Uh, this right here is the um, bolt that goes through and as you can see a little better shot right there that that head is uh, triangular so 17 millimeter bolt on that. This is the reservoir itself um, ceiling surface here and a ceiling surface here uh, emptied it out looks pretty clean inside this is the far end so this is the end that was leaking this is the um, o-ring that came came on it this is from the opposite end. this is from the pump end here um, so I'm going to try and uh, go to a local auto parts store and see if I could get these. The thing about these, I don't know if you can see, um, they aren't oval. Uh, the O-rings aren't round. Um, the circumference of them, or the diameter of them, they have a taper to them. I don't know if that's from uh, just being crushed uh, and uh, being exposed to the hydraulic fluid over the years that have made them the shape, or if that's the actual shape they are. So I'm going to do some investigation. Uh, I, I've found a, an, uh, at least one website that has um, uh, that services these here. I'm not sure if they sell uh, O-ring kits and that sort of thing. And then there is an O-ring. So this bolt passes through here. There is an O-ring inside here. It's still fairly tight, and it, from you can from the looks of it, it does not look to have been leaking at all. So um, I picked up some uh, uh, washers and I mean O-rings for it, and here, here's what I found. So um, these two here are the originals. Um, they are flattened and they are fairly br hard and brittle. These two are the new ones here as well. These two uh, grommets are for the front feet uh, on the motor itself. The rear ones have a similar grommet but it has a, a peak on it that sits into a, an indentation on the back in, in the uh, trunk area. This is the, um, the fuel filler screw. Um, this O-ring right there will work on that one. Uh, this O-ring is for, this is the bolt that goes through uh, the reservoir and holds everything together. So this bolt, this uh, one here, this, o-ring goes over this however what I learned yesterday and maybe some of you already figured it out before I did was that I thought that there was a separate piece in here an indentation um, where 
this o-ring would go actually it's just flat it's it's squashed between um this um uh, this washer here and the bolt now um uh, it, it will fit like that the bolt the washer will go like that and then the bolt will go through it just like that what i also found out was um i dis di discovered that not just those o-rings were leaking but actually the o-ring that stops the fluid from getting past the uh, motor shaft so here's what i've had to do so far so you've got to remove these five bolts right here uh, obviously i've already loosened and taken these out this is the cover uh, for the pump and you take this off now you need to be careful if there's no seal on it it's just a uh, these sits on these machine surfaces here um, these right here are two um, uh, where do I have it here uh, these two uh, ball bearings are these two ball bearings here are for the uh, uh, direct the, the flow of hydraulic fluid fluid you just take those out and put them right in here if I can get it off here. Um, here's the uh, pump mechanism itself. You can just use a magnet and pull them both up. Uh, first, this one will come up. Um, now the, it goes only in one way. As you can see, um, here is it's flat on, perfectly flat on this side. On this side, it has an indentation in it. So this is the part that will go down inside the pump. And next you have the second part here. You pull that right out. Um, as far as I can tell, there is no top or bottom to it. It's both sides are, are the same. Now, um, so here's, here is the end of the pump, uh, the motor shaft. I could push it down. I've already pushed it down. Um, what I'm going to do now is uh, flip the motor around and work on the other side of it. <clears throat> I have to be careful. The, I already pulled the brushes apart and make sure I get those back together correctly, but it must have been leaking for years because I've when I when you'll see it shortly the inside of the motor is absolutely filthy it is covered in uh, uh, transmission fluid and is filled with debris and dirt and gunk and crud and everything so we're gonna flip this motor around and we're gonna see if we can pull everything apart so here we go so this is the opposite side of the motor as you can see yesterday it was really clean today it's pretty filthy good night Deb hey tonight is pretty filthy um, I've already taken out, I've already taken out this screw here. This bolt here goes all the way through and I've taken out this bolt as well here too. You, you can put a flat bladed screwdriver right here and begin to pull this up uh, right here and just pull this up just like I am right here. Just before we go any further, these right here are the two bolts that go through from the back of the housing all the way through. And obviously the ground wire attaches to one of them. So you just want to set, set these aside so you don't lose them or get them damaged. So as I said before, um, here are, I'm going to pull the back of the motor, top of the motor off or back, whatever it is. Um, now I've already had this apart a little bit um, uh, before I got to this point. So here are the brushes. Here are the brushes right here uh, for the left and, side, left and right side. The ball bearing here goes right there and forms kind of like the... Um, uh, the end point or the rotating point for the end of the motor shaft. So I'm just going to put these here in my bucket of parts. And you can't you can't um, uh, mix up the size of the uh, ball bearings from the pump and that because they're two totally different sizes. So uh, let me get a little bit of light on here and you see just how filthy this is. I've already sprayed some brake uh, cleaner in here to get it to this point. But it's still pretty filthy. But everybody, this is what uh, the motor looks like after I cleaned it. Uh, I used quite a bit of brake uh, cleaner on it uh, and uh, got a lot of that garbage. Obviously, it was running with all that gook in there and that mess, but um, I wanted it to uh, hopefully just run a little better. Uh, but uh, here we go. So my next uh, challenge is to get the brushes back in here. Uh, right here right here is where that o-ring came from so i don't i didn't get one of these o-rings i don't think i did i'm going to see um this is brittle 
It's very hard. Obviously, it's been leaking for a long, long time and causing part of my issues here and problems here. So I'm going to see if I can replace that one and begin to re uh, begin to um, replace or uh, 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 repair or put the motor back together again. Um, I'm wondering if one of these fits in there. I got this this little one o-ring here for the connections and it looks like it'll fit in there um i'm gonna i'm gonna see if uh, it's it's sitting it's seated in there but i don't know if it's exactly the right size so um i'm gonna do a little bit more messing with this is the one i just picked up today uh it's for the connections that will go right in here this is where the the line uh, comes out either on one side uh, the fluid comes out uh, for going up or the fluid comes out for going pumping it down uh, the, the hydraulic pistons up and down so well this is my lucky day because I've uh, come to the conclusion that this o-ring right here that was meant for the other T fitting the T fitting goes in here that it is uh, meant to go there so I'm just gonna try and um, get it up inside there let me see here Sorry, my finger's blocking there. Yep, it is. And if I just use the edge of the screwdriver, I can push it in there. It's, it snugly fits in there. Um, and then I will slowly push up on the motor, armature, whatever it's called. Uh, many people know better than I, and see if I can make that fit inside there. So be back in a few. So I've reassembled the whole motor. Uh, everything went together. Well, uh, no issues or concerns placing it all back together. The one thing I did find out, though, uh, that I should tell you all about is that when I checked um, on the motor itself, the brushes here uh, were almost worn all the way. You can see this one here is just just a hair uh, remaining uh, on this one here. Uh, you can see, and this one here is about twice the size. Actually, um, the new brushes are nearly three times the length of this one here so uh, obviously uh, the 50 plus years of wear and tear um, have uh, shown you know on these brushes so here's the replacement that i got at a local electrical um, uh, supply warehouse um, they're they're like seven dollars each for ones and i uh, put them in there together again so um, good luck when you do your uh, motor uh, it's not that difficult. Uh, it just takes a little bit of time, and um, I wish you all the best of luck.